Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to Facts and Two Cents with PMP Pamela here and Paddle. Yes. <laughs> And uh, you won't believe, but we will tell the story behind this episode <laughs> sometime later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are back, and today's conversation is going to be on what has been happening this whole week and last week. So a lot has taken place. Um, mm -hmm. Prince Harry and Oprah Winfrey um, have come up with this amazing, amazing docu series, which we are going to touch on. It's so huge. I think. It needs like its own a few episodes on it, but we're gonna to try to do it justice this week, uh, this episode, and just highlight certain things and other pointers as well. And we also want to talk about um, Princess Diana's interview with Martin Bashir and uh, mm -hmm. the responses from his her two sons, right, um, Prince Harry and uh, the other one, <laughs> the other brother. The we other shall brother. Not be. <laughs> Oh, we I might mention his name, but right now I'm, I'm going to call him the other brother. <laughs> I, I have a new name for him, though. <laughs> I call him Royal Tory. Royal, Royal Tory. Tory. <laughs> Royal Tory Prince William. <laughs> yeah. But um, our channel, and I think I'm glad we're doing this now, our channel is all about our faves, about Harry and Meghan and uh, Archie. And uh, so. Baby Matisito. Yes, but Sister's Quiet has been calling her Lady Montecito. Lady Montecito. Okay, Cita. I stand yes. corrected. That's her <laughs> lady. But lady Montecito, um, uh, Mama Doria, Pula, and Guy. These are our faves. And the chickens. You can't forget the oh, chickens. Oh, and the chickens. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And the well-feathered chickens. Yes. <laughs> They're healing very well because, yes. you know. <laughs> yeah, the Sussexes are taking really, really good care of them. So those are the people and things we care about. Um, the show is, we are, we're petty. And um, also, what are we again? We're petty. Bias. 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 Yes. Yes. Very biased. Yeah, very biased. <laughs> so I saw a few comments. Somebody was like, is that not, well, did you see that comment on the show? When she was like, you guys are too biased. And we are like, Okay, we did say that. <laughs> said. You said that. Like, come on, that's a waste of your energy to even respond. I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. We, told you we own our bias. We will. That's what we said. <laughs> All right, we're not changing our minds. We are biased and we are petty. <laughs> our faves, Duke and Duchess of Success. Here we go. So, today, before we start, we want to say a big, big thank you to all the people amazing people who have chosen to follow us and decided yes. to follow us. We are grateful. We are so appreciative of it. Um, not in my uh, wildest dreams that I think overnight from like, what, 10 <laughs> followers? <Dad. laughs> no, that's not 10 followers. We'll go to like almost 800 in a couple of days. That for me, and pedal is, um, is that's a little awesome. shocking. That's a little <laughs> like, shocking what? to us. That's 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 great. But we I we owe this to, and I want to say thank you to Sister Squad Podcast, uh, Michelle and Tina. Tina for definitely, you know, when I spoke to well, messaged her about it, she took a look at it and she just promoted us like crazy. And then on her podcast, she you know brought us up again and showed a clip of us and then the link. She posted it and said, go follow them, you know, and really uh, gave us uh, the props. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Petals that she owes, she's going to give you her first child. Um, yeah. So just prepare a room. You're going to have a child at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to give you my first child, but I will buy you. A condominium or something? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll do the condo too. <laughs> but thank you guys. Thank, thank you, ladies, you so much. So thank much. you. Thank you. We and appreciate you it. You sent over the most wonderful, wonderful people. I've been like, I know. So Such a squad. Oh like, they are so supportive. It's I just know. like, man, I saw someone trying to come for us and they run that person out. <laughs> I was just like, oh. I didn't even have to say nothing. <laughs> you guys, By the way, can you so see my t-shirt? It says, 
Oh, <laughs> she raised the sessions of success. Yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah um, I love it. <laughs> so anyways yeah so we've they they're like no and I think we do that for each other right so when I'm on someone's page or somebody comes for them I'm like I take it on yeah. and I'm like yes. defending <laughs> them so it's something that we just do automatically defend each other and protect each other so we are so grateful thank you so so thank you <laughs> yeah quite it's quite easy you're awesome all right great so Let's go on, move on to the topics. Let's go to the me you can't see. First of mm. all, that title is awesome because if you think about it, we all walk around and we show what people need to see. Unless it's very visible, you can't tell what's going on in the person's mind, right? Right. That is also part of them, right? So it doesn't define that person, but it is part of them. So it's like the me, the part of me that you can't see which is something that I want to share with you or, you know, kind of like that kind of conversation. It would be a very good lead in conversation to be honest with you. It's like, Hey, the part of me that you don't see or know, I want to share that with you. And that could be a very good sort of conversation. But um, when you saw, before you saw the show, what were your thoughts when you, when you heard of it? And then what were your thoughts after you saw it? Um, it's so weird because I, you know, at first when I thought, when I heard about it, you know, obviously, like, great, Harry and Oprah are doing... I mean, we've known about this documentary for, yeah. like, two years. So yeah. we knew it was coming. And they had talked about it earlier in the year as well. And... But I I definitely didn't expect this. You know, I've seen shows before. I've seen, you know, whether it's on talk shows, even Oprah's shows, you know, a lot of it's, it comes across as therapy. Dr. Mm-hmm. Phil's show, you've, I've seen these shows, you know, on television before. So I was kind of thinking it might be something like that. You know, I've never really sat through and watched the entire show. And especially if it's not something that is, say, related to me or something that I've ever experienced, for example, schizophrenia or something like that. Like, so I've never really sat there and thought outside of, what my experience is. I never sat there and thought of, okay, well, let me listen so I can hear someone else's story. And I never thought of it in terms of someone else's story because they have a story to tell that even if I don't, it's not something that I've experienced. I want to listen to you so I know your experience so I can know how to meet your needs just in case, you know, somebody in my life desperately need me and then I can, you know, be able to help that person. So for me, going into it, you know, that was where I came from. And then I did not expect the death. I did not expect right. the rawness. I did not expect mm-hmm. the just even, you know, for example, again, like say schizophrenia, like to sit there and listen to and really pay attention to someone else's story and empathize with their pain, even though we may not have the same struggles or the same pain or the same grief whatever but I could empathize on a human level that whatever the situation is there is pain there and I can empathize on a human level in that way and that's why I came across with that though no matter what the specific situation was I can still feel that person's pain I could still Mm -hmm. listen to their story and be there even though I may not have I may not have the words to, you know, to help them. I may not, but I can still be there and just be there. Even if I just have to sit with the person and be there, that is okay. You know, and that's what I came across with a whole different level of thinking about mental health and a whole different respect for it. Cause I honestly, I never really think about my mental health. I know I'm sad. I know that I'm whatever, but I never really think thought of it on that deep Mm -hmm. a level and how there's just a thread that runs through all of us that we can relate to in some way i i will never be the same after that the way i think about this so yeah that's what i think think, yeah yeah that's great i think for me it was um i was obviously we were all excited you know the squaddies were preparing for it i was like come on you know waiting for that day to come Uh, (laughs) i knew I knew personally that just knowing how Oprah and you know does production is going to be excellent, right? So that I knew. Um, I think I was wondering how Prince Harry was going to sh- show up in it in terms of uh, what role, right? It wasn't a concern, but I was 
curious, you know, how it's going to show up. Boy, did he show up. Man, that guy needs to own his own talk show. Well, it's kind of to know him, but you know what I mean? Like he asked questions and he managed the whole thing, his part so well, like the kind, you know, the way he was able to lean into saying questions and, and, you know, really jump in and ask, hey, Oprah, give me a minute. I just want to ask, follow up with that question. And it was just amazing. The questions he was asking were very, you, if you listen to his questions, you can realize that we're coming from the things that he's always talked about when it comes to mental health and mental wellness, right? And one of the part that really stood out to me is that there's mental health and then there is mental wellness. And then there's the in-between where the spectrum and most of us exist in there, right? And, and that could be somebody who has trauma with either rape, you know, uh, abuse, divorce, loss of jobs. Like those people, those, you know, are in that sp space. And that is also PTSD. You can get PTSI. It's a PTSI, right? I don't want, again, I want to list, start using uh, Prince Harry's term, uh, post-traumatic, yeah. you know, injury. Post-traumatic yeah. injury instead of post-traumatic disorder. disorder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and where, you know, a lot of us reside. It could be an abandonment issue. It could be um, a breakup, you know, whatever the case may be that you need to really talk through it and heal because it is a shock to your system. It is, it impacted your, 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 your mind and your thought process and it has hurt. There's hurt, there's emotions. If there are emotions, then, you know, there is some, you know, some issue that needs to be dealt with. And maybe you don't need a huge, uh, um, you don't need to be on medication, like I'm trying to say, but you could just need to talk to a friend, you know, uh, do a staycation somewhere if you can afford it. Uh, mm -hmm. go to the park, read a, a book that makes you happy, like something. Talk to a friend, see a therapist. But there's so many things that you can do to just reset yourself, so that way you can manage those things. I think that was really uh, that makes sense to me when I watched that. That's one of the things I got from it. I should say, and I was so impressed, so impressed by the <sighs> whole production. Um, and I know we're going to talk through it a little bit, but just the whole thing, you can either relate to it personally or somebody you know, or realize that this is, these are tools that you can take on. So the next time you see something or hear something, you're able to uh, just even listen, right? Prime example for me, I was in a gym the other day and this guy comes in. We have never seen him in the gym at that time before. And he was just talking to himself. And you know what my first instinct was? Is to be critical. I was like, what, what, what does he do? And I was like, calm down. Mm. What happened to him? And once I thought, came, that thought came to my mind, I just, I simmered down a bit. You know what I mean? I was just like, okay, all right. It's not hurting anybody. He's just talking to himself. Like, you know, and acting a little bit out of norm, but who's to say that was abnormal? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> He's, normal for him. Yeah, but it was normal for him. And he's just doing his workout. Obviously, he paid his membership and he's coming to the gym, you know, to work out. And if he chooses to talk to the machines, good for him, you know. Um, and so, yeah, but then, so I'm saying that that's one of the tools that you can get. I at least got from it that I'm not, when I see something that's out of norm, out of the ordinary, that I don't go ahead and react. Except a few, you know, royal reporters, which I'm still working on. So they know they know who they are. <laughs> so we know what happened to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, even going into them, I mean, you know, for example, you know, Angela Levin and and, and Camilla Tomini and, and um, Penny Junior, especially, is right. you know, as we were talking, they are three women who have experienced trauma. They yeah. have experienced incredibly, especially childhood trauma. Yeah. You know, um, Angela Levin with an abusive mother, um, Camilla Tomini with her um, alcoholic mother. I mean, I remember one of the things Camilla Tomini, I think, and I'm probably paraphrasing a little bit. One of the things she said is that she she couldn't understand why her mother couldn't stop drinking. So I think she said that that's one of the things that plays on her mind, why her mom couldn't stop drinking so that they can... I think have a, like a great relationship or something like that. And it's, it's disease. like, Alcoholism yeah, is a and, disease. you know, and then she, Camilla was also an alcoholic and, you know, 
and she said she has stopped now and it made her, you know, it's made her a better person, but she clearly has not dealt with the trauma because right. she is perpetuating the same abuse on other people right. in different ways. The same thing with Penny Juno, who, whose uh, father was the, um, was, um, he used to run the express. Uh, you know, while he was this big boss and stuff at, at, at work, he was very abusive at home. You know, her brother drank himself to death. His her father was an alcoholic. And really, you know, he, he, he went so far as to even torture Penny's husband. You know, and it's, she literally, Penny Juno literally says that she was glad her father died when he did because she dreaded the fact that if he got older, she would have to take care of him. Oh that is God. how bad it, it was, you know, and she wrote about it. She wrote a book about it and she experienced some of the same pushback that she is doing to Harry right now. Yeah, yeah. And so when you see these people are attacking and like, why are you, you know, and it's like, but you went through the same traumas. You went through those childhood abuses. You yeah. wrote books about it. You wrote articles about it. You did videos about it. Even in the case of um, Camilla Tomini, she even had like have like other families who lived and grew up with alcoholic parents. They did like a this like a round table thing and it's it's on BBC. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but she did it to get paid. Like this they do yeah. these things. Like you made a good point. They all have this hurt background, traumatic childhood, but yet they're not willing to deal with it. They have this upper stiff, stiff lip thing going on, you know, and but they would talk about it if it's going to generate income. Exactly. Right. And then They'll write books about it and do all this round table. But if you truly want to be healed, you will, because revenge and humility or, or, or what do you call it? Retaliation and humility or just antagonizing people with humility does not coexist. You know, you have to really strip down all that, that horribleness and all the things that happen to you. So that way you can really be sincere. And when you're sincere, there's some sort of humility that comes with it, right? And when you're really just really work through the things that you've worked through, there's this humility that comes that you can able to relate to other people. That is why, you know, in the movie, you know, we'll talk about it later, but uh, Zach Williams and even Prince Harry was talking about how helping others help them, mm -hmm. right? So that's what comes out of that, but you cannot, be evil <laughs> and antagonize people. And, mm -hmm. and then you say, whoa, me, whoa, me, this is what happened to me. You haven't dealt with it. You're not ready to deal with it. Because if you are, there'll be changes. Yeah, and I think that's right. the thing. They are not, well, they're not at a place where they're able to deal with their pain. They may have right. written about it and all those things, but I think Harry dealing with, especially this, because it's so raw and so real, yeah it clashes against their British sensibilities of that stiff yeah. upper lip. Oh, no, 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 I'm fine. I am dying right. inside and then tearing apart, but I'm fine. You know? I'm rotten inside, and, but I'm fine. <laughs> but I'm fine. You know what I mean? And they haven't, to, to, come up, come, to come up against someone who has the status and all of that as Harry and being so real, it just goes against everything they yeah. were taught and everything they believe in. You know what right, I mean? Exactly. And so they are not able yet to deal with the real thing that is in there that is tearing them apart. And, you know, you see, you know, especially Angela, unfortunately, Angela has become her mom. She has become that very thing that she hated in her mom. She has become that and is perpetuating that behavior. So yeah. I think until they, and I hope, even as evil as they are and has been behaving, I hope that they will take a minute to actually watch it yeah. and actually watch it and be able to, you know, I, in my heart, I want to like tell, throw stones at them, but I really, <laughs> I know as Harry said, what happened to you? Yeah. And I hope they are able to um, be able to watch it and somehow be able to get in touch with their pain and so that they can be healed and really become could, better though? people. Do you think they could? We've just, I feel like it's so hard for Harden that maybe this could be a start, but I, I feel like they need more than this to, to change their way because the oh, moment yeah. they finish, the moment they finish watching it is either what's the next story to write about. Right? right what am i gonna say to keep my job so that way my publisher can be like okay good good job you wrote something really 
scathing, right? So that is what I think that would be, we wish, we hope not, but that's what I, we can, we are sure they would watch it with that kind of critical mindset, something they can pinpoint or say that was wrong. But that's, but then that speaks to their character. That speaks to who they are and where they are, who they are as, a hu as, hu as human beings, right? It's, 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 it's deplorable. But anyways, uh, Prince Harry was really, really good. Oh, Prince Harry's Check amazing. Check him out. <laughs> he has, showed out. <laughs> has, has showed up, has had his leg crossed. By the oh. way, with the same sweat shoes that he always has, oh, one of them. I was like, has, okay, all right, we see you. You're not materialistic. That's okay, boo. Oh boy, just uh, he is growing. And I think that too is what is really throwing off the British people. They yeah. still are seeing little Harry, teenage Harry, who is running around yeah. doing crazy stuff. And that's the who they are, and that's the who they've hold on to. This mature exactly. man sitting in front of them, they just can't compute. Right. No, they can't. <laughs> he communicates well. I mean, we already know that, but I think. I mean, for a while, they always presented Harry as somebody who is not smart, right? Oh, yeah, like, this is they're what they've done. Literally dumb, yeah, yeah you know, dumb, not yeah. very bright and all of this stuff. And I was like, the devil is a triple liar. Like, yeah. Harry is like on point. Like, I was like, oh, shoot, what does that word mean? Let me go check this word out. But he was just like so articulate and in the conversation, leaning into the conversation with questioning and like just really bringing out answers from you know from people and well, at least when he was talking to Oprah I've also seen the path forward so I'm, I think right. I'm going back and forth on those in those areas but even with with just the, the docuseries his vulnerability his uh, mm. his rawness and you know when he was asked you know at the end when Oprah asked him uh do you think uh there were uh, the reporters are, are trying to take control or whatever it is. Do you remember that question Oprah asked him? And then he goes, no, they're trying to they, they uh, they're trying so far, they're, yeah, to take over the narrative because, you know, they're afraid if they lose it, the truth will come out. And I was mm -hmm. like, bingo, mic drop. He's not faced. Like, at this point, I think this, the squad, we should not, and Tina has been saying this, and I'm quoting Tina on it, She's like, we should not be worrying about Harry and Meghan. Like at this point, they have established and have boundaries and they have a wall around them. Mm -hmm. If you come for them, they'll come for you. Those don't yep. release the truth, right? So in a way, the squaddies, yeah, we don't even need to pick on those non the trolls. Like, no, no, you're irrelevant. Uh, yeah, because this guy was just like, he, I was just, I was blown away. I was in Impressed. I was proud. I was just like, go, Harry, go. You and know? I think, you, like you said, it's like I, the quality of it, the quality mm -hmm. of the series blew me away. Mm -hmm. And you know, also, too, is that this, because also, I didn't know, and you know, Oprah said it, um, and she's reiterated it again, in, and even gave him props in the way forward that the global aspect yes. of it, Harry yeah, pushed was, for that. That is yeah. Harry's. That and is so like, Harry. <laughs> that is Harry. Harry the Truman. <laughs> that is Harry. I mean, the global, I mean, that is brilliant. Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, because what would the show be without Fauzi? You know, oh, no. like, speaking oh of Fauzi, man, I fell in love in Fauzi. I could adopt that kid if I could. I'm like, it's now that we're speaking of Fauzi, I was just so I was crying the whole time because imagine, you know what it is living in America or living in the UK or any other Western uh, country that there's not a major war going on, you don't realize the trauma and the day-to-day right. -day life and death that's mm -hmm. going on. Unless you tune in on the radio, you watch the news or you read, read you know, go online. But there are people who are live, living in the US who do not have a clue of yep. what this, the magnitude of refugees that are hanging out, uh, live displaced and going through so much trauma. Right? right, and they still haven't processed what is happening to them because they don't have enough time to even process it. There's so much going on. 
this little boy saw his brother blown off. He said he couldn't find his brother's head. Like, head. Was mm-hmm. And I was just like, do you know what that means? Like, he was not willing to go there because he can't, I, can, I can't even imagine him trying to make sense of it. That's why he smiles. Yeah, that's why he smiles. He's like, but I'm I, so yeah. happy the doctor, the the guy that was able to the therapist, yeah, there's a wall, yeah, the therapist, like there's a wall going on, and in five, ten years from now, you know, we have to determine which one is going to win, right? Good or pretty much good or evil, right? Which one is going to win, uh, and we have to take care of it now because that guy can grow up and be so angry, and nobody going to understand if he doesn't tell anyone, right? And he's going to yeah, react yeah. to things, and no one's going to know why he's acting that way. But imagine seeing your brother's head blown off into pieces. Yeah. And your mother crying. And and what is so, and I think that the part that cut me so much is every time he smiles. Yeah. Because you would see that little boy and I could see him on the street of New York walking and smiling. And you would, you know, you would never know what his yeah. trauma is yeah. if you saw yeah. if he didn't if you didn't know his story and saw that sweet little smile as he yeah. sat there you would never know the it trauma know. that child has been through right yeah and it that is every time i saw that smile my heart broke yeah, yeah. you know and not just him his brothers no, so like there's millions of thousands the that are there they're all yeah, there's thousands. Yeah, there's little fousies all over, you know, and there's little girls who've gone through the same thing or even during this time that have been raped, right? And and those are all traumas that's going on. No one is talking about it. And you know, obviously, but yeah, it's 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 huge, it's huge. And that's why when Harry said even even this pandemic, he says this is gonna last us from you know from generation to come. The impact is gonna linger for a very, very long time. Refugees also went through the pandemic, right? And we don't even know, and they were living in very close quarters. Mm-hmm. And so that's a whole thing. I think even when I was thinking about, it, I was like, wow, how did they even manage that? Because refugee camps is not a luxury. It's like no. you're close to to each other. Man, that's something we should look into. I'm like, who? What was the yeah. infection rate and the death rate in those areas? In those, in exactly. Camps? And yeah. and also, too, it's like there are, you know, not just the little kids. There are also women, pregnant women, yeah. young babies. There yes. are, I mean, all kinds of in, in these situations and in the trauma. And, and we will talk about it in, you know, when we look at the, the charity um, that really yeah. helped actually Fauzi and his friends and all mm-hmm. of that. Um, but it's just, you know, I think Oprah, oh, one of, did they one of them bring it up or was I just thinking about this? But it's no, just, Oprah I was thinking Oprah about, it up. about, you know, all the, you know, the, the little black boys that are running around, all of them, the police stopping them, you know, the trauma, yeah. of all, you know, wherever they go there, you know, the cop is there, no, they're afraid, or Oprah. you, yeah, all these, all of these, all of these situations, they leave they leave the person that comes into contact with, with wounds. Mm-hmm. You know, these are all traumas. These are all yeah. and plays on your mental health. And yeah. so how many of that is running around, you, you know, without the, you know, and you just see them as little kids out there and you don't understand it. And when they, you know, if they act out, then you, you look at the, 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 the you know, the, the behavior, not realizing that it, it, within that person, a trauma has happened. Something yeah. happened to them that yeah. is causing this. Right. And if we don't address those things, this behavior will just escalate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Black folks are, have BT, BTI, BTS, BTSI um, for 400 plus years, right? Exactly. And so and then when people say, why are they react? Why are people react a certain way? It's generational trauma. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah, and that's that's real. It's not a joke. It's real, and even people of color, pretty much, right? So it's it's it it really helps you to really take a step back, you know. And so, what happened to you? And even what happened to us as black women, right? What mm-hmm. happened to us? How you know, just the way you're defined, the way you're seen, the way you are referred, what you're referred to. Um, 
it's what happened to you because if you, if I come into a meeting and I go to a place and I sense something and I'm able to, because I know that's my lived reality and I start reacting to it and people start questioning me, oh, you're aggressive. It's like, you don't know what happened to me. Hence my reaction. And it, it tr something triggered that. And exactly. so when you, and then when you tell me I'm aggressive, then it triggers it again because it's just another follow-up trigger. <laughs> then it right. goes on and on yeah. and on. And then God knows where it ends. But yeah. It's, it was, yeah, Fauzi really, really, really impacted me. I was just like, this child, there's many Fauzi's around going on. And, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, you know, we, we'll, we, we'll see what we can do on our end with the charities that we will talk about at the end of the show. But, yeah. And then what else? The, the farm oh, where okay. people who've lost children. children. Mm -hmm. I... I didn't even know that existed. Mm -hmm. That broke yeah. my heart. Yeah. You know, it really broke my heart. But it also helped me to see, and I think, which is one of the things with, with um, mental health, um, the stigma of, okay, you're going to a therapist, you're going to lay on a couch, you, you know what I mean? That yeah. there, there's this thing that there, there's just one way of getting help. And I think one of the things I appreciated with this series is just all the different, the myriad of ways that you can go and get help, you know? Yeah. And I never would have imagined that there existed a farm where people go with all, it's like broken people yeah. going with, and, and just being with animals who are also broken, who've also gone through trauma. Yeah. And it's like the animals know Exactly. You know, I remember the gentleman yeah. was saying that the dog. The dog, the yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you see when he came back and the dogs are barking and saw him and run towards him, I was just like, oh my yeah. God. They, 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 they cho he just chose him. He's like, you go and the animal will choose you. Yeah, that was. And it's just, it's like how they, they it's just like brokenness, new brokenness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah. through that, accepting each other in that way, it's like you're helping each other to heal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it too. just, oh, I, I, I will never forget that. Yeah. Alex also stood out to me. Alex, the Martinez girl, I think she has schizophrenic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I could definitely, it's very close to home for me, a family member who has that. So uh, I'm being that person's life, uh, being able to, uh, you never, you know, when they off their medication, it's completely crazy. And then it's really uh, hard to get, up, get them back on their medication and, and just understanding how to maneuver through that. It's, 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 a, it's a task on its own for, for the caretaker or for the family member. It is a lot, right? Um, but so, so I can relate to that on that aspect. But with Alex, it was just like, sometimes you think you can fix it for the person, mm. right? Because you're like, well, it's ABC. So just do ABC and then you will go. Like you've gone to school, you've graduated school, so you get a job, right? And then you wonder why she's not keeping a job. So yeah, so you think you want to fix it and it's, it's not about fixing it, right? It is, it's a lifetime type of management where you manage it so that way the person can be productive in society, right? And it's not, because in our mind, it's, you need to give a solution. Like, why can't I just fix this? This needs to be fixed, right? And so I was really, really good, glad to see that Oprah was like, it took her, she didn't get it. And it took her time to really just realize that this is not about fixing. It's about mm -hmm. helping Alex to coexist with this and function the best way she can with this, right? And realize that it will, there are triggers that will trigger her uh, so she needs to be aware of those. I think those are all the tools that I'm sure that Alex is probably getting or has gotten since then. But that was also really, it, it, it stood out to me because in my case, I was like, well, just do X, Y, Z. In fact, with the family member, like take this, take this medication and you should be fine. And that's not it, it's not it. Right. It, is, it is something that it is within them it is part of them, but it's not who they are. But being that it's part of them, they have to learn to 
coexist with that part of them right and be able to still function in society yeah 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 Yeah. another one that stood out to me a couple more but um hussein manawa um, oh, his mom. Oh, yes, God. yes. It's so funny. Like the first time I heard of him was when he was in Harry and Meghan's podcast, the, right. the podcast. Yeah. And then he actually did something with the other brother for Mental Health Awareness Week <laughs> the last week or two weeks ago when they were bashing Harry mm-hmm. <laughs> during that Mental Health Awareness Week. Right. And he did um, a poem with with them for the heads together thing. And um, well, of course, they have to get him to do a work with them because Harry and Meghan worked with him. Okay, I got it. Gosh. <laughs> um, and oddly enough, the other brother, his line in Hussein's poem was, you know, let's not stop talking about it or something like that. <laughs> but then tell your royal reporters and- to criticize Harry for talking about it. Okay, all right. It's okay. like, hello. <laughs> infantile it, it just, it, yeah and yeah that's why he's so, in trouble right but now Hussein's <laughs> like his it's so yeah and it's so amazing to see how the the just the power of art and be able to express yourself through your art mm-hmm. and or whatever creative outlet that you have is right. also a form of therapy yeah because it has helped him dealing with his mom's death his, his yeah. mom's sudden death yeah. And it's just that broke my heart. And you could see just the way like his poetry is not just words. You know what I mean? It's not just something that is just beautiful. Oh, that's I think that's why we're able to connect. Like even there was a clip of um his poetry and people are listening to it and you can see them how they are right there with him as yeah. he spoke and they're like, you know, it's almost like they're saying, Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Because yeah. it, it, it cuts that it goes so deep and I'm so happy that yeah. he's able to be able to, he's able to um, get it all out in a way, in that way, because it, it not only helps him, but there's so many people that, that won't connect with just talking to them. They won't connect with just writing. They won't, connect, but they connect with that kind of, those kind of verses coming at them mm-hmm. because it cuts in a way. Yeah. And I'm not even all into that, into poetry. And I was in there as being like, yes, who's saying yes. Yeah. You know, and that's how much it's, it's not just beautiful words, right. you yeah. know, because if yeah. you can, if you can impact somebody like me with that, who's not all that into poetry, then you know that there's something there. Yeah, that he's know? expanded his reach. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, I'm absolutely. now like I'm now yeah. into poetry for some reason. Yeah, that that's what that's what Amanda Gordon did for me. I was exactly. just like, ooh, I bought her book. I was like, I haven't read poetry since I was in like <laughs> primary school. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Well, college because I had to. Well, actually, yeah, you're right. College literature. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. Mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, ooh, I ordered her book. I was like, mm, let me get into poetry. <laughs> who knew that is a form of therapy that is exactly just like who knew you know exactly and then glenn close family issue was also really Uh, touching uh, as well uh, 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 has his sister and his sister's son both uh schizophrenic right and bipolar i believe Uh, um, but that was also really interesting and the whole thing i mean i mean we need to like move on to the next one but the whole thing lady gaga you know Mm -hmm. just talking about her abuse and her mental health and then it explains why she was off from producing music for a while and people what's going on with her and she was constantly sick she's like she's sick she canceled her tours and you know like you don't really know because you don't know people are going you know, through people are going through right and uh you know being raped and you know then pregnant by this producer and I, you know what she said that really stood out to me and i i hear her where she said I understand this whole Me Too movement thing, but I am not ready to talk about it, and I don't feel comfortable. She says I'm not ready. I'm not. I'm not comfortable. I'm not going to do that. I never want to see the guy again. I don't want to be part of. Like she doesn't want to <laughs> do that, and and I get her. I get why. Right? It's she's not in a space to do that. She's not because right now she just she doesn't want to deal with the guy. She doesn't want to 
even mention his name. She doesn't right. want to see him. So and she's still on her healing process, right? And who knows if she's, when she gets to a point where she wants to talk about it, even if she would, maybe she'd be like, I've gotten through it. I've gotten to a place where I can, I can live with it or I'm you know, okay with it. So I don't even want to talk about it. I'm good. Right. I don't know. But I hope at least she's told one person or two people, her therapist or somebody. Yeah. You know, because that helps. Just voicing that name, saying that name, gets it out you know out there yeah. so so that yeah. was um, and I think everyone we're all so different yeah you know yeah. what i mean it's like we are where we are some yeah. people they they heal in in a more private situation with just them and their therapist right. some, some of us you know you know because that, that's one of the things about, you know, people are saying about Harry, like, well, why could you just be you and your therapist? Why do you have to tell the world? Why do you have to? And it's like, well, yeah, by telling the world, you help other people too. Yeah. You know what I mean, some people are okay doing that. Some people just can't get, they're not yeah. there. You know, they may never get there, but that we're all so different. And I think mm. one of the things that's really, you know, we talked about it in our last episode um, about Lady Gaga and what was so, infuriating about you know just listening to her story is knowing what people like say Pierce Morgan did when she yeah. first told her story about being raped yeah. in the PTSD, that he abused her on top yeah on top of it well she had to not only deal with her trauma deal with the trauma of even talking about it right because that in itself is traumatic yeah deal with people's you know well, she is rich, so then she's fine. Or, you know, who, you know, we have bigger problems. You have all this money, you have fame, you know. You know, I have, you know, she has to deal with that. And then she has to deal with people like Pierce Morgan. Yeah. Attacking her, questioning her, where she had to then turn around and then take her time in the middle of her trauma to school him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what makes me so infuriated. And you yeah. see people like Glenn Close. You know, Glenn Close is a big time actress, Oscar winner, money. She has all of it. Yet here she is with family members who have schizophrenia, who this is real pain. And I don't care how much money you have in the world, what your status is in the world. People are in pain. And I think it's time that we just get over this really. And this really gets me irritated whenever I go on Twitter and see this. Well, they have all this money and they have all this exactly. privilege. Yeah, you know, exactly. yeah. How could they sit here and? I mean, they did that to uh, Krista Teigen. Oh. They did that to Krista Teigen. They did that to Kim Kardashian. They do. I mean, listen, you don't have to like them with their profession. That's fine. But when somebody yeah, comes on there and uh, something has happened to them and they explain their pain, just because you have money and you have wealth or you're, you know, all these privileges, doesn't mean that you don't feel, you don't get hurt, you don't. You don't ache. So we've. Uh, what about the the path forward? We just spent, just spent a few but, minutes just talking well, about do that. Want, do you want to talk about what some of the things Prince Harry talked about? Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh. Go for it. Let's start off. Has <laughs> so interesting because he um his um walking behind his mom's coffin. Yeah. When his mom died, and I think we can we can start from there because I think that's where the beginning of that trauma um apart from you know other stuff in the royal family but where it started and one of the things that is and he talked about it in the path forward too when he was talking about Rob, to robin williams son that that was one of the connecting things they had was walking behind uh, princess diana's coffin and one feeling like sort of like an out of body experience mm -hmm. and then seeing all these people around him grieving and yet he wasn't able to. Yeah. And then he could, the thing, the, one of the things that stands out in his mind was the sound of the horse's hoofs underground. Yeah, underground. That was so, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the part of the British media and, and all of the royal family are unable to connect the dots because uh, like he said, you know, when Oprah was like, oh, you only started doing therapy four years ago. And he was like, yeah, but you have to remind me that I'm not coming from a place where that was encouraged, right? So it wasn't until he, you know, Meg, uh, they had an argument and he asked, he made sure, told him to really get, get help, to see some therapy. 
get some therapy, right? I should say. So it's 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 really difficult that despite all the the symptoms, right, and all the things that has happened to him, and clearly indicating that from his twenty eight to thirty two years were like the worst. But guess what? There was the worst for him. It was the best for the media, right? The and royal. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? Isn't yeah, that amazing? Party boy Harry. Party boy Harry. You know. That explains his whole Las Vegas, uh, uh, you know, shinding that he did. He was actually said he was going to Afghanistan the next day, right? The, the following day he was going to Afghanistan. So he's probably thinking, let me live it up. If something happens to me, at least I lived it oh, up. Oh, yeah. I think oh. that's what his mindset was. Yeah, totally. And he was going to do anything he wanted to do. And, you know, he's leaving the next day. But there was so much that was going on, turmoil that was going on in his heart, in his mind. People didn't realize it. Even if they knew, they should have known. But that's what I'm saying. How did they not know these things? They knew. Well, going back, even when he talked about um, when he got therapy, he actually said, before he even got to getting therapy four years ago, he actually said that though he didn't name who the people, and I know from few previous interviews, um, especially the, the interview with... Um, the Heads Together interview that he did with William and Kate, right. and then the um, interview that he did with Brioni Gordon, that right. William actually had it, told him, you know, and he mentioned that a few times, that something isn't, something isn't right. You need to see someone, you should see someone. And so Harry did say, but in, the, in here, he, he didn't mention the names, but he did say exactly that. And he said, you know, if somebody is going through something, don't tell them you should go see someone because the first thing they'll say is no. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. But he actually yeah. did because he did say he went to, he saw doctors, he saw a therapist, he saw alternative, alternative therapists. Alternative doctors, so yeah. So he was, you know, even though he, his initial was, oh, I don't want to do this. He actually did because he said he that. He said he saw He wasn't he saw ready. People. He, yeah, he wasn't ready. Exactly. But he just said time, it was everything. He wasn't ready. Exactly. And he probably did it because they were telling him to. And which is exactly that. the point. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but it, the, the, you know, even though he wasn't ready to really deal with his issues, th something in there helped him to the point where when he had that argument with Megan, he knew, okay, I need to deal with this. Yeah. Because, well, one, you know, you just need to deal with it. And two, yeah, two. You, I'm going to She's going to be gone. One. Yeah. Exactly. Megan <laughs> is not going to sit here and deal with my anger and let my anger come out on her. You know, nope. she's going to leave. Nope, you know what nope. I mean? She'll and he gone. said, like, princess, though, or, prince or not, she's gone. She'll she's be gone. gone. <laughs> you know, and so he's like, I wasn't angry at her. It was misplaced anger. And he realized, and even when he said when he went to the therapist, she even said like, oh, it's like you went back to when you were 12 and you got a little man. bit like, you know, a little yeah. offended. <laughs> Don't call me a child. Are you calling me a child? Exactly. Like, no, I'm so empathizing the 12 year old in you. Yeah, exactly. And it's so amazing. So because I saw like a lot of people on Twitter got really upset because they thought he was just, you know, totally rewriting history and not giving credit to the fact that he did he did seek therapy before. And I, and I keep saying, no, he actually did say that it's, you mm -hmm. know, it's very quick, but he did say that. And, you know, and they brought up, well, yes, he did say it on Brianni Gordon. I'm like, yeah, Brianni Gordon also wrote an article in the Telegraph. And she also said that Megan is the one that encouraged Harry to do the podcast with her. So mm -hmm. that podcast that you just posted it was Megan that encouraged right. her. Him yeah, to she go did say that. I read that. Yeah. Brianna yeah. Gordon wrote that in her article, and I post the article. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, that shut, that yeah. shut them down. Uh, yeah. But, you yeah. know, so they got a little offended with, you know, thinking that he had just completely dissed his brother. And, but they did, you know, they did, they were part of it. He just wasn't right. quite ready. And I keep saying, you know, there are layers to this, it's not a one time fix all thing. And I'm sure in the coming future, Harry's going to see something else and then he's going to need additional help, you mm -hmm. know, you yeah. know, to work. But he did say that. He said, you know, himself. was it him or someone said, you know, you go through certain things and then you get to the same point and something else comes up again. And I think I was watching some, uh, some, the news or somewhere and we're talking about mm -hmm. it. And someone said, it's, yeah. So you, right now you feel you're okay, but it's, it's, it's a continuous, you know, uh, the journey, yeah. journey getting help because 10 years from now, something else might trigger you. And then you're like, oh, okay, let me go back, reset, you know, because 
it is part of life. We are living living beings, and we, you know, our emotions are ever ever so growing, and you know, ex, ex, exploring different things that we might just react to something, and we're like, wait a minute, where did that come from? All right, let me go back and retouch, right? Right. Because at this point, he's done the work. It doesn't mean he's healed. It just exactly. means that he knows how to manage those things. And uh, and as a human being, which makes him imperfect there might be things that will trigger again. And when he does, he's like, okay, I have the tools. That's why he has the tools to go back and use those tools to reset. So that right. is part of that. Exactly. The other exactly. part for me also was when he said, um, talking about his dad, he's like, when Charles told him and William that it happened to me, so it's going to happen to you, basically get used to it. And he was like, no, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you even say that to your boys? You know, like, I mean, from, as far as I know, parents are supposed to, whatever they go through, most parents, <laughs> right? Oh. Whatever they go through, <laughs> do not want their kids to experience the same thing. They want something right. better for their kid. You know, it's like, for example, African parents come here so that they can provide their kids better lives. Caribbean Caribbean parents the come same here, thing, yeah. you know, Asian parents, parents come here you know like all over so their their next generation have a better life and so they want to give their kids things that they didn't have including you know not beating the the life out of your kid as they do in some you know back home or in other countries right so they like no they not they communicate with the kid they want to like okay what you know i thought there are other options so for for charles to say that tells you how disengaged he is like he is not even He's not being a father. He's not being a, you know, like he's, he's not being a dad. He's not even connecting to his kid's pain. He's like, just deal with it. It happened to me, so it's going to happen to you. No, what if it, what if he could say, it happened to me and I'm not going to let it happen to you? Right. Because he has the power to say that. He has the right to say that and, and, and put into practice. Like, no, it happened to me and I know how bad it was. So I'm not going to let it happen to you. Yeah. And I think that's what Harry is getting to in the sense of generational trauma being handed down. Because Prince Philip was, let's, oh, just get on with it. The yeah. queen is, just get on with it. That's let's, his you favorite know, word, it, just get on it, with it. it. Yeah. So. And so that's exactly the, that's exactly that behavior is what Charles was talking about in Jonathan Dimbavi's book. You know what I mean? And yeah. Prince Philip sent Charles to the school where he was literally abused. Oh yeah, the crown Prince showed Philip it. Prince Philip bullied Charles. <laughs> you know what I mean? He belittled him in front of people. I mean, it was horrendous. Yeah. And Charles was like, you know, Charles is Charles is a creative. That's why you know, when Princess Diana, when they asked her, you know, should he be queen, and she's like, if that would be very limiting for him because Charles is a creative. <laughs> you know what I mean? Prince Philip was this rough and tumble person that couldn't understand that his son yeah. was more into art and music and dance and all of yeah. those things. And so that old way of thinking just got bam, yeah. you know? And so Prince Charles, because he is emotionally stunted and never have dealt with his own trauma, then he's like, well, it's happened to me. He's gonna, he's just literally passed that right on to yeah. Harry and, and yeah. William. William is that way now. And mm. Harry is like, no, you yeah. know what I mean? And so it's kind of like, and it's this thing with the monarchy. It's like, you do the same horrible thing and expect a different result. Across the board. Time. Yeah, it's the same horrible pattern that they're repeating. And it's not just in this area, in so many horrible areas. And they just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over. Yeah. And I mean, then it's like, think, well, that's just the way it is. And it's like, yeah, you would think they'll learn with Margaret, no. right? Which is Margaret. No. Then, no. Will, and then also the queen's cousins that were put in, 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 in isolation because they have yes. mental issues. The Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Like they were never seen to be ever seen again. They were locked up uh, and they died. Right. I think they all yeah, like, they, well, they both yeah. died in the mental institution. Mental yeah. institution. Yeah. Left right and then again just think about that they have mental issue in the family look at that you know yeah, and even princess diana princess, princess diana. diana she Craggy. had like postpartum depression and all of yeah. those things instead of helping her they used it as a stick to beat her yeah what what ended up happening they labeled her and stigmatized her unstable yeah. paranoid you know Does that sound familiar we'll get to even that thing you know sounds familiar now oh god 
<laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's the same pattern across the board. You know what yeah. I mean? And so when Harry's like, no, we have to break this because why? You, uh, right now you're, oh, little George is so cute. Oh, Charlotte is so adorable. Louis is so cute. That's what is going to happen if they don't break that stigma. It's going to go past down right to those little kids. Yeah. The abuse, the, you know. Well, who said it's not happening right now? Because right now, all the focus is on George. Charlotte and Louis are like second and third spares. Exactly. Yeah. They are going to be treating them the way they treat Harry, the way they yeah. treated, um, you know, yes, um, Prince, whatever his face is, pedo guy, you know, Andrew. yes, he did that. But before all of that happened, it's the abusive spare behavior where mm-hmm. he got all, he became like the court jester, the one they mocked and humiliated to protect Charles. It's yeah. the same abusive pattern that is passed down. That the whole yeah, well, they did to Anne too. Anne was, was like completely Anne was completely ignored. She yeah. she did not even exist. You know, what I mean it's like she that's and, why she kept yeah. to herself. And so yeah, and if, if they don't if they don't address this now, that's why Harry don't want his kid anywhere and ever. Because that is exactly what's going to be passed down. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't break that cycle, those kids, and it's already happening, like you said, they're yeah. already pimping their children out to the Daily yeah. Mail with those creepy calendars. I mean, whenever, you know, something happens and they, you know, they know they're really having bad press, guess what? Pimp Bring the, the kids forward. Oh, of course. <laughs> I can't imagine. Serve it in a silver you. platter. Here are I the know. kids. Who in their right mind would allow their what seven, five, and two year old, three year old, whatever he age he is now, in the Daily Mail yeah. to have those creepy people putting a, a magazine with your children in a low grade tabloid? Yeah. Who does that? William and Kate. That is just like. <laughs> I'm like, like I, I cannot Speaking imagine of, any person other than in the royal family who would do that to their children. I don't of, care who you are. Who in the, in, <laughs> I cannot imagine one British family saying yes. I'm well, we don't know. They might. In the Daily Mail. You never know. They might. Listen, if someone give them a good amount of money, they will. Yeah. <laughs> it just gives me the creeps. <laughs> but the other one that was, I think that also just was really, really, really um, hard to take was Megan Smear when she was going to do the interview with Oprah and Harry was indicating how the institution of the firm and the media were in cahoots to smear, you know, do a smear campaign about her, how she was crying. I mean, this woman, I'm like, man, I wish they have another kid so she can have like a peaceful pregnancy. But oh, um, yeah. each preg each pregnancy, like, you know, three so far, they they had, you know, they made her lose the second one. The third one, she's crying. Like, people are, it's like, God bless this woman. Like, her strength is amazing. Because it's like, what else do you want from her? Like, you guys are trying to, obviously, we all know now, they're trying to kill her. They're trying oh, yeah, to so kill her. Oh, yeah, so Harry said it. He's like, yeah. not going to stop, until, stop they until they kill her. Yeah. Until she yeah. dies. That's, that's the and, end, and, though. And that's and that's not gonna happen. Not in our lifetime. Not in her lifetime. We're not on our watch. Yeah. Yeah, not on our know, watch. The, you know the funny thing is, Valentine Lowe, who wrote that bullying article, what, what Harry was talking about, right. yesterday wrote an article and mentioned Harry um, going uh, saying that um, Meg social media caused. Um, yeah, I saw that. And I was like. Yes. You're such a liar. I said, like, tweet very blatant <laughs> <laughs> tweet at him. Yeah, so I'm like, so you, not social media, social media you were yeah. the one who teamed up with Kensington Royal yeah. <laughs> to smear her. You are who she was talking about. He, Harry was talking about. Not social media. Harry meant to nothing about social media. He said, it, you in the British press are yeah. the one that's trying to kill his wife. That right. is what he was talking about. Yeah. You are the one that smeared his name. They get social media is also out there, but that's not. Social media is not going to kill Megan. No. The British They're the press. one inciting their trolls yeah. on social media. The trolls on not social media get the information yeah. from the, the, from the, the British, British press. press. Yeah. How dare that? And I'm like, he mentioned what you did specifically. 
how dare you? You know? <laughs> and it's like, I am so proud of Harry that he just like, you know what? Let, we're going to, you trying to do that in secret? Yeah. We're going to talk I'm about it. it. Yeah. I love the fact that he said the firm and the press. The press. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. The firm and the press. So we and know they're we colluding know. and they were the ones who colluded to do it. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. exactly. You know? What a shame. And yeah. And then he talked about, you know, Megan's, uh, you know, when she, she had suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. and he's like, you want to, you want to see, you want to see history repeating itself. My, 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 my was mother was dating, dating someone who was not white, but, you know, who was not white. Yeah. You know, I was like, you go ahead, go ahead, talk about it. They're <laughs> not like... going to stop. And he's like, they're not going to stop until she's dead. Yeah. You know, and exactly. he talked about how triggering it is because Harry was also a friend of Caroline Flack, who they killed. Right. So that's why he said the list is getting longer. Yeah. So his mother, you have Caroline, and there might be others. I don't know who else he's friends with. Who well, his two ex-girlfriends, his two ex-girlfriends, they date, they chase them out. So yeah. they might not have killed them, but they, you know, they, yeah, the loss. Friend, exactly, his friend who is here now, who they Scott, uh, Scott, see, Scott, what, you know, she lost her baby because of it. You know, yeah, the Scott and Alana, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's like they. I mean, this girl talk about a loss. She lost her baby because they were abusing her and and him because they're friends of Harry. They can't yeah. get to Harry, so they abuse their friends. Right. Yeah. Exactly. She it's, lost her baby because of that. Yeah. For something that was completely falsified. Completely false. And the same Daily Mail reporter did the exact same one. Nicole, that, is it yeah. Nicole something or is it Nikki or Nicole? I think this guy was a guy. Yeah, I think his name is starts with an N. Oh, okay. I, did, I don't remember. Well, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll look at it. That. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, he was we'll the same guy who was like, the, yeah. He was a guy who called Alana the day before Harry and Meghan's wedding to tell them about what they were going to write. And then use the picture of her mm. them looking really sad. That same yeah. picture. That's yeah. what they used in the lying yeah. article. Yeah. How yeah. disgusting yeah. and malicious do you have yeah. to do yeah. to do that Evil. to somebody? Come on, come on to him. I said to I said to his on his Twitter account, that's why I can't remember his name. I said, You, yeah, you you decided to destroy a family to make money to take care of your family. Because he has a he has a kid or has a family. I said, so you were willing. To, to you were willing to destroy another family for no reason so you can buy have money to buy bread and feed your kid. That that makes perfect sense. Karma, you're gonna get yours. You're gonna definitely get yours. And a lot of those people say, you know, those reporters, they all have kids. They have yeah. families, kids. You know, you think of Emily Andrews, you think of um oh, Becky, uh, Elizabeth, whatever her name is. They all have families. They all have kids. Yeah. yeah they think nothing. Carmela Tomini. They all have kids. Yeah. And that's they what, think nothing of destroying somebody else's yeah. family. And that's what Megan was saying. They don't. They don't report the news. They create the news. Yeah. Right. So using Alana and Scott's picture while they were walking to the wedding was okay. Let's call them the day before, so that way their whole mood would be you know ruined. Then use that picture. But then we sell perfectly. The same thing with Harry, Harry and Meghan's wedding. Let's hold on to the news from their dad, her dad, and release it a week, the Sunday before her wedding, or the Sunday, the week before her wedding. So that way, that will create commotion. So it's right. most effortlessly, strategically done. Yeah. Um, and to just to 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 ruin people's lives for no reason. Now I can understand if it's the truth. And you're reporting something that is true. Then go out ahead. You know. Do, speak about it but to falsify to create false narratives and then perpetuate that and then have people believe it and then make you know like create a whole kind of like what harry said like a truman show create a whole thing and then sell it as though that actually happened that's diabolic that's diabolic yep. And that's why they hate harry and megan now because they they are they're taking away any narrative they have yeah that's what I'm telling you. Has is not playing. Yeah. Has is not playing. You say yep. it, he say he says it back. He hits you right back. <laughs> yeah. But I think another thing that was um that really stuck out to me from Harry was um he talked about feeling ashamed. Mm -hmm. The shame that comes with someone who 
the shame for that person because when they're having suicidal thoughts and it's so funny because that has never been something that I had ever known that was associated with suicide because I think Megan mentioned that you know when she she felt ashamed and Harry talked about him feeling ashamed because of how he dealt with it yeah. because when they first talked about it, he said he went to a dark place and then you know and it's this dutch feeling of oh my gosh how come I, why didn't i know i i should have known i should have done more i should have you know and feeling ashamed that somehow you didn't do enough to yeah. uh, or you know you didn't make the, the, their life safe enough so that they would not get into that place and it's such a weird thing that would you'd feel ashamed and i don't know maybe just me thinking that but that was one of the things like wow I would have never associated those things yeah you know with suicidal thoughts right. so I didn't know until they mentioned it and then hearing the the different um uh therapists and stuff talk about the shame that that person who has suicidal ideations and stuff that they would feel and the people around them that they would feel I never associated those two so that was a big yeah. learning is like wow I would right. have never connected those two right it's just the fact that the place where he is now where mm -hmm. you know they worked through and fought through so much and in the end talking about he said like you know I wish we had done this four years ago he feels like now that he's in a place where they that his mom would have wanted them to be that you know he is so happy and feels her presence where he is and they're at peace and so uh, for me I just want that for them I would just yeah. want them to you know continue to grow and, and and stay at peace right there in Montecito with their chickens you know awesome. and I just I I really am happy that they have gotten them fought through to get to a place where they feel like I'm at peace so now I can uh, and I'm full and I'm be able to give the give back and share with others so that others could be full as well so I Perfect. just think that that is really awesome well we want to definitely talk about the charity charity humanity yeah. crew yes 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 and it's a humanity crew if you've watched the me um the me you can't see that is the organization that is helping the refugees that um that's that Fauzi that group that Fauzi is a yeah. part of and so they are in Greece, I think. And what they do is that they really focus on bringing mental and psychological help and support to refugees, men, women, especially children. And it's, um, they also work with, um, you know, moms and, um, and also when, you know, they have little babies. So they have things, for example, like shoreline, um, shoreline specialists, I should say, men and women who are trained to help refugees when they literally come off the boat and the shore of the water. And that they have men and women there who are trained therapists that will help them to, you know, whatever their needs are to help them to be secure to know because it is a traumatic experience. You get on those little dinghy things or these little boats crossing the ocean to try to get to safety, whatever the issue is that you're running away from, yeah. whether it's war, whether it's a volcano, whatever the issue is, you know, and you get to the shore. So they have uh, mental health uh, professionals and therapists there. They have mental health professionals who are also on um, they are lifeguards who are on those boats that some of the boat, you know, the refugee boats, I, some of them don't even make it. And so if they're out there and they pick up refugees, they have a therapist on board that could help because how traumatic is that? You are in rough waters. You don't even know the country you're going to, if they will accept you, if they turn you back, you don't know. So those um, mental health specialists are on those boats and that they can help the refugees. Humanitycrew.org, you can go there and find it. They, they really, um, especially if you see it with Fal you know, Faldi, they have trauma classes for children. Yeah. One of the things they also do, which is very important, is they also have anti-bullying um, groups that they, um, they, programs that they send to schools. Because when these, if they, these kids end up going to a school, they equip the school to help the children to not target refugee kids, either, you know, bullying or, you know, they have any kind of, you know, 
attach any stigma to these kids, you know how things could get. So they really equip the schools around them to be able to help the kids who are at the school to not target um, right. refugee kids with bullying. Well, they can so find all that them. on the website. Yes. You know, we'll leave the link the website. and uh, definitely contribute to them. I would definitely look into it and contribute as well. So I think it's, you know, if Fauzi did anything for you, moved you in any way, then there's many Fauzis as well who, exactly. who equally move you and would need help. So let's, you know, let's go ahead and subscribe if you can. I know this is not one of our charities that we're talking about, but this could be. So if you, you know, can help, please, please, please do help. And let's Exactly. And I've seen help. many people have been, have been um, supporting them. So that awesome. is really awesome. That's fantastic. Thank you guys. Yeah. Well, on that note, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. I think this might be a two-part segment because uh, <laughs> when we share them. So if it does happen, then you will see part one, part one, part two, and maybe part three. We don't know. But yeah, we have uh, we definitely hope we've been able to give you some facts. You heard our two cents as usual. And until next time, au revoir. Ciao. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>